G'day home brewers, my name is Jeff, this is 15 Minutes in the Brewery, and today I'm going to be talking about two things, and we talk about new fridge, you can see behind me, and I'm also going to be talking about uh, my hops in the backyard, and just a trellis I've, I've built, to, um, so I can grab my hops up a trellis. Finally, last year I grew them on a trampoline, so we'll talk about that in a sec, but first of all I want to talk about, uh, actually I'll mention the beer first, this is my Swartz beer, still drinking it, um, it's a great beer, love it. Even on a hot day, like it's, uh, what is it, in the shed, I mean, I don't know if you're ever going to see that or not, but it's 30C in the shed, so it's hot. It's um, it's about 27 outside, 28, something like that. It's actually quite cool for this time of year for Western Sydney, believe it or not. Um, we haven't even had a 30C day yet, 30 degree C uh, maximum in spring, which is, you know, second year in a row, I think, so normally we'd have at least five to ten days now that have hit 30 at some point between September and even sometimes in August but between September and November so it's actually been relatively cool so stop waffling this um the Schwartz beer it's, it's going down really well I'm actually drinking it today because number one you can drink this on a hot day because it's a lager and um even though it's a darker lager I don't know I can I can drink about five six of these really too easily to be honest it's a really good beer but Actually, um, I've had a few people try this beer now, and I've had actually had mixed opinions about whether or not it's true to style for a Swartz beer, which is fine. Um, it's my first attempt at a Swartz beer, so I'm not saying I know exactly how to brew one beautifully, perfectly, according to BJ, BG, BJCP guidelines. I have no idea, to be honest. Well, not have no idea. I have I have a fair idea, um, but you know, it probably takes you several times to brew a recipe before you really start to hit your stride. I think so. Um, the, the mixed opinions I had, interestingly, were about uh, the little bit of roastiness you get in this beer. Some people thought that's not the style. Um, I think it's the style. I mean, I've read the BJCP guidelines, and a small amount of roast is acceptable in a Schwartz beer. Um, it's a bit dark, and that I agree, it is probably a bit too dark for a Schwartz beer, although it is under the limit as far as darkness goes. So um, those two things aside, I think it's pretty close. I actually had one opinion that it was more like a porter, which I thought was odd because I fermented it with a Pilsner yeast and I don't get anything really porter out of it. I mean, for me, a porter would have that ale yeast kind of back note flavor in the background um, and not a Pilsner, like a lager kind of note in the background. So I don't know about that, but I think it's pretty good beer. Uh, 5%. The next one I'm going to brew, I'm going to try and brew one lighter so i'm going to go for around maybe four to four and a half percent i'm going to work my way down see how low i can get i've got a friend who in the local brewing group who uh, has brewed one sub three percent and it was delicious and smashable on a hot day and uh, that's that's a that's a good thing to have i think that's a, a nice goal to to aim for anyway i'm not going to talk too much about the beer we've already talked about the beer before in the past what i want to talk about is the fridge so i was lucky enough uh to get a fridge uh, this week on Gumtree. Gumtree is just our local buy and sell or whatever the equivalent is. I think it's Craigslist in the United States. Gumtree is kind of our equivalent. So you just buy and sell privately with different people. Um, and this was listed for sale. It's just a fridge, so no freezer. And you can see there's no freezer in there. And it's a side-by-side -side unit. So uh, a 600 millimeter wide fridge and I think a 400 millimeter wide freezer, which you can buy separately. So they don't, you don't necessarily buy them together. And they just had the fridge and they were renovating their kitchen and uh, it no longer fit. They actually had wanted to put a bigger fridge in, so like a bigger combo fridge. So this wouldn't fit anymore, so they had to sell it. Um, less than a year old, and I picked this up for 350 bucks. Less than a year old, stainless steel, uh, fingerprint free, stainless steel finish, really good condition. Like, like I'd see an immaculate, like almost new condition, like seriously. If you, if you bought this at a second shop, you know, one of those factory seconds, and it was like, oh, I had a slight ding somewhere, you think, yeah, spot on. I mean, it's even st still got the tape on there, the protective tape over the logo. So this is gonna be my new serving fridge. Um, I want my serving fridge just to be a little bit stylish, more stylish than this poor old thing. I like this fridge, it works well, but it's an ugly old fridge, let's face it. It's a garage fridge, it's a shed fridge. It's not a house fridge, whereas this one, I could easily take this and put this in the house one day and people wouldn't even know it was a beer fridge. You open it up and there's all these kegs inside. Now, I'm probably not gonna tap the outside 
and I think I discussed this in the past a few times, but in this shed it gets hot, like today it's 30 degrees in this shed, and the taps just get hot. And um, your first pour is always gonna have a bit too much foam in it as a result. So I like to keep everything inside the fridge. Now maybe one day, if, I, if it was an inside fridge permanently, I'd consider it, but even then, probably not. Um, I love, I like kegerators, but I don't know. I, I actually like having everything hidden away so people don't even know what it is, and then they open up like, what? So you open up and inside you'll have like picnic taps or um, Pluto guns or whatever you like, you know, to serve your beer from. So great fridge, 330 litre. It's just slightly smaller than this one, but it's slightly taller, slightly narrow inside, but slightly taller, uh, taller overall. I can actually fit, and I'll show you. I had the uh, people measure it before I picked it up. Just measure the inside for me. And I can fit. It's uh, nice and tight. But uh, actually, I might just lower that so you can see. Yeah, so it's a nice snug fit. But um, yeah, it fits perfectly. So I can fit four kegs on the bottom shelf. And that door closes perfectly. Now today, what I've been doing today, so I haven't had a chance to do anything yet with it. So today, I've fabricated the bottom shelf for it. So this is just a piece of plywood. It's um, 10 millimeter plywood. And that's gonna sit on the bottom there, just for now. Uh, I've cut that to shape so it fits in there. It's a bit rough, but you know, it's a keg fridge. I don't really care that much, to be honest. Um, if I wanted to make a better one, I could always buy another piece of ply because that's an old second-hand piece we had from a um, cupboard, a 10 mil backing board on a cupboard. Um, and if I wanted to make it better, I could make it better. It's no big deal. Um, and what I'm in the process of doing right now is just seeing whether or not I can fit the crisper tray back in, or whether I'm going to leave it out and just brace this in the middle and I'll have a compartment underneath and I'll be able to slide underneath. I'll be able to slide um, long-term storage for bottles. So uh, all the bottles I wanna um, kind of keep long-term, long age, I'll now be able to put them in my fridge. Well, not all of them, but most of them. So that's the crisper unit for it. And that fits just like that and closes perfectly. So I could still use it with a crispy unit that literally acts as a new lid. So basically it just behaves like a new lid. And um, it, all the pressure is on the sides here. Now my only issue is, yeah, being 10 mil ply, um, I might actually have to buy 15, like four, I think it's 15 mil or 16 mil, 18 mil. I'm not sure, 20 mil even probably be all right. I might have to buy thicker ply. Um, Cause with four full kegs, that would be, you know, nearly 80 liters of beer. Not that I have four full kegs all the time but I'm likely gonna have upwards of 60 kilos pushing down on that bottom shelf, and I don't want that to collapse onto the, um, onto the crispy unit underneath. Now, the, it actually comes with, as most all fridges do, I guess, it comes with a lid and a glass plate. The glass plate slides in the back, and the lid sits there. Now, I'm pretty sure I can fit that on top. And I might, I might actually do that just to provide a little bit extra, um, a, a better seal in the crisper, if I use the crisper that is. Um, but I'm probably not going to, I'm probably just gonna leave the crisper out. Um, but it's just a pain in the ass. The, the problem is it's a pain in the neck to store the crispy units when you're not using them. So if I have that out, I've gotta find somewhere in the shed to store it. Make sure it's not gonna get broken or cracked or anything like that while I'm storing it because you, you wanna kind of keep it in good condition. If you ever wanna sell the fridge or you wanna repurpose it, as a fridge, you know, if I get a new keg fridge or something like that. So I want to keep try and keep the crisp, crispy unit without breaking it. So we'll see, we'll see how over time, but it is actually quite a good shape. The unit underneath is a good shape. So apart from this uh, rough bit on the bottom, I could probably use this to store yeast. Actually, that's probably a good idea. I could use this to store liquid yeast, dry yeast. I could put hops in here as well. Um, that's probably not a bad idea. So. So anyway, that's what I'm doing with the fridge. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is build a shelf up here, another timber shelf here. So it'll sit just above the kegs. It'll give me enough room to get my hand underneath to uncouple kegs. And then I'll be able to put a keg on top as well. 
Um, if I can build the shelf to the right height, I can possibly fit eight corny kegs in this fridge. So um, that'd be nice, eight corny kegs, but I don't, I'm not gonna have eight corny kegs full of beer. Anyway, that's the fridge. Let's go talk about the hops and we'll finish this video up before I waffle on for too long. So here we are in my new hop yard. This is just the back corner of our yard. Um, and we originally had a trampoline here, which is just next to me here. A large trampoline, it fit in here really tight. Uh, and what I was doing was I was growing the hops around the trampoline. I'll, I'll put up a photo of what I was doing last year, but I put basically put wire around the top post of the trampoline was growing hops around that because my kids weren't really using the trampoline much anymore. But, um, and I was going to do the same thing again this year, but my daughter complained that the reason why she didn't want to use a trampoline is because it was covered in um, hops. <laughs> And because it was under these trees and in the corner here, there's a lot of spiders get onto it. And you know what kids are like, girls, especially young girls, you know what they're like with spiders and things. So, uh, so we pulled it out and she started to use it. So I had to build myself something to basically grow my hops on. Because I'm gonna grow hops, I wanna grow hops for my beers. So what we've got here is just basically like a two-way frame. So it's a two-way frame, it's braced up the top. Now it's never gonna be as strong as a four-way. It's never gonna be as strong as a complete square unit that's closed off. So if you shake, like it's gonna move around a bit. It's gonna have a natural bit of movement in it, which is just gonna be the way it is for the time being. We might put a fourth post in later and make it into like a pergola and maybe grow something else on top as well. But for now, this will do the job. So I've got two plants there. That's Pride of Ringwood and that's Columbus. And over there I've got um, a hop called Jake's Gold, which is a uh, Australian variety of Goldings. Um, it's probably like over a hundred year old um, variety that hasn't been modified within since the 1800s more than likely. So found in South Australia and propagated by Silver Springs Hop Farm in South Australia. And I bought a rhizome for them because it's a historical Goldings variety. Now whether or not it's a beer brewing variety or a baker's variety, I don't know. I haven't brewed with the cones yet. Last year didn't produce big enough cones really to brew with. The Columbus did, the Columbus work proved uh, produce some really nice cones. Uh, the Pride of Ringwood, that's its first year and I'm gonna be growing it for cones. I did have it last year, but it was a tiny little plant with a sm like the smallest little rhizome. Um, and it just didn't grow enough in the season last year to make it, to be able to get it to grow like this. So this is its first basic year where I'm gonna be growing it as well. So that's the hop trellis. Um, yeah, it does the job. It's got um, twine. I've used the Koya, the Koya uh, coconut Koya uh, twine. I got that from Silver Springs as well. Um, thick stuff, and that it does the job. It's going to do the job. You know, at the end of the day, we just want the hops to grow along there, grow along there, and then maybe we'll put like a table and chairs out here. My wife was talking about that, and we could sit out here and have a couple of beers in the hop yard. That's nice. It's good to have a yard big enough so you can grow hops. That's a nice thing to have, I think. So. Um, and it's next to our vegetable garden, and right here is our sunflowers. We've got a sunflower patch right there. We've got fig trees there, and over there we've got corn, tomatoes, everything growing down the side. So, nice little spot in the garden. Well, it was crap before. It was just a back corner of the garden covered in junk. When we first moved in, this was overgrown. There was trees, old, horrible trees. It was overgrown. And yeah, we've cleared it out over the years, and now it's going to be a nice little hop yard. So there you go. Anyway, that's about it. I'm just, just waffling now. It's, this is about pretty much all I can talk about. So. I uh, hope you liked the video, hope you got something out of it. Um, if you're interested in how I'm growing the hops or how I'm setting up the fridge and you've got questions, just let me know. Otherwise, thanks again for watching. If you made it this far, thank you again. Thank you twice. And I'll see you next video. Cheers. Mm -hmm.